All right, lots of examples this week for you to see how we can work with pixels to manipulate, transform, totally destroy, make weird and freaky and glitchy um, images from uh, source photographs and images. So your assignment is going to be to create an image filter um, focused on pixel manipulation. You can certainly use other things along with this, but I really want you to think about pixels and what you can do with that. Um, and the other sort of layer here is that I'd like you to focus this on um, being formatted for either Instagram stories and or TikTok. Um, so just to give you some context, in 1990, Adobe released what is now this totally ubiquitous piece of software called Photoshop. Um, you know, it's, we use it as a verb, but in included in that first release were filters, which were um, kind of a really new experience for a lot of people and allowed you to transform an image to blur it or to make it look like a drawing or embossed or mosaic. And a lot of them are really horrible and a lot of them are really incredible. Um, and now today we see platforms like Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok using um, more complex filters and effects, often which are doing things like face tracking or background subtraction. So more complicated image processing um, to do a huge range of things, to make images look vintage or to transform color um, or to manipulate your face or do really weird, cool stuff like slit scanning. Um, so you're going to be digging into images as being things made of pixels that you can modify. And I'd like you to make filters. Um, but really my goal is for you to make the weirdest, most interesting um, far out filter you can. So it's easy to make something that'll just sort of like tint the image or do duo tone or something like that. I want you to make something really unique and strange. These don't have to necessarily be practical or beautiful. Um, I would also like you to design them to work as um, images for Instagram stories or TikTok. Um, so it should load an image, it should do something with its pixels, um, save the result, and it should include the UI overlay so that we can see it kind of um, uh, in the context that we would see it. So I think a good way to do this as well is to work in an exploratory way. So don't set out saying, ah, I want to achieve this thing I've seen and instead just experiment and see what happens. Um, you're going to get really stuck trying to like solve a problem rather than explore creatively. Um, so a few things to note on setting up your project. A common first step if you were given this assignment would be to find out the ideal format and restrictions of the platform. So for an Instagram story, and I just Google this because it's always changing or often changing. Um, so an Instagram story is 19, or 1080 wide by 1920 pixels tall. And there's a safe zone at the bottom for the UI elements um, that's, you know, you wouldn't want to have text and stuff down there. TikTok are the same dimensions. The safe zone we'll see is more complicated. And then the other thing, and we talk about this in the UI um, overlay example. So if you've already watched that, this, you've seen this, but um, you would want to include that um, user interface so that we could see what this um, is gonna look like in context. So you might then, if it's for a client, go um, find for free or probably more likely buy a PNG or an Illustrator file um, to, to use for this or you could spend an hour or two like I did and make it. And so I've gone ahead and done that for you. And in the resources folder, there's the Illustrator file you can modify. If you wanna see more about that, watch the UI overlay video. Um, and that'll allow you to really modify this and customize it. So some examples um, to take a look at here for us. The first, um, I have some pre-digital stuff that I think is really cool. So this is Paul Signac. Um, 1893, a painter who's part of this um, movement called pointillism, which I'm sure you've seen before, like Seurat, um, using little dots of color to form the image rather than big solid areas. And this is worth um, really zooming in. So if you can download this and take a look, because the color here is just so complicated. I think actually this is lower res than I would, the one on, um, on uh, Wikipedia. So you might want to follow the link because it's really just this incredible image. But you can see, for example, her skin is not made of a single color. It's all these alternating kind of dabs of color. Same thing with her clothes. Those dabs are conforming to the movement of her, the cloth. Um, there's just, it's really, really cool to see that. Um, a few other folks that are um, 
also using painting. This is Chuck Close, um, 20th century, 21st century painter and um, maker, first doing super photorealistic portraits and then transitioning um, around like what the 80s or 90s or something like that to kind of breaking apart images, almost like thinking about pixels, but in the sense of paint. Um, I believe, I'm not sure if this is paint or torn paper here, but you know, if you squint your eyes, you really see that image. Um, this is a self-portrait from 2007, and it's made up of all these weird little squares where the colors aren't accurate to what is there, but somehow combine in your brain that we see this face, which I think is really cool. Um, and this uh, piece also called Shirley, this is from around the same time, same kind of technique. Like I love the way the hair kind of dissolves into the background or her ear, like you see it, but you don't see it. There's something really cool here. Um, I did wanna add one thing about Chuck Close. Um, you know, I think it's important not just to know about the work, but to know about the context. So um, in 2017, several women came forward and claimed that Chuck Close had sexually harassed them. Um, there's been kind of a long fallout as a result of this. Um, there's also a really good article um, I think these are conversations we continue to have. Um, what do we do with the artworks that are made by someone who um, maybe doesn't have such a good past? Um, so I just wanna give that context as we look at his work um, as, as we think about this stuff. Okay, another painter um, who uh, is really great, Lee Song Song. Um, this is called Civil Rather Than Military. This is contemporary work. And I just love, this is paint. It's like big smears, but again, you squint your eyes and you really see it. It's so great. Um, and then um, some just other cool examples of people working with digital images. So this is done in Photoshop, Secure. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say this so wrong. Yif Durim um, from 2017. So this is using Photoshop, but you could start to imagine ways of doing this with code. Um, and it's like just a really simple thing but it transforms this image into this like otherworldly, really cool. Um, I, you know, I don't even remember where I found this. I think this was a stock photo, um, but I love this. I think it's just looking through um, like privacy glass or whatever, but the way it breaks up this image is really awesome. And then um, a couple of artists who I really love. Um, the first is actually, let's look at these online. Um, the first is filler by Andrew Benson. Um, so this is gonna load my webcam and do crazy cool transformations of my video. This is all pixel based. So this is like looking at neighbor pixel, neighboring pixels. I don't know if you can see me, kind of hard for me to appear here. Um, and doing some really interesting stuff. Now this is running in a tool called WebGL, um, which is, definitely outside of the like scope of what we're able to do here. But um, uh, WebGL, OpenGL, these like GL based languages run on your graphics card, which are able to um, sort of run in parallel all this image processing. So we've had uh, examples where it's running really slow in the browser. This is doing just a ton of calculation um, all in real time because it's using a different technology. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out WebGL. It's very, very cool. It's also weird and confusing. And then um, a couple examples from Ben Grosser, who's um, an artist and um, does really interesting stuff with code. So this is one project. Um, I'm not super sure what's going on here, but um, I believe it's taking pixels from an image and then like manipulating or transforming them, having them move around in these random patterns um, is pretty sweet. This goes on for quite some time. I think it's like a half an hour long. So it gets just like really, really full. Um, and of course, with all of these, the source image you feed in is really gonna change the result. So something super low contrast and minimal color here might not work as well as something that's more high contrast. Um, and then this cool project called Flexible Pixels, also by Ben, um, where he's using real-time webcam input and sort of doing this mosaic tile-like thing from those colors. I believe this is done by drawing squares, rectangles, rather than um, drawing back the pixels, um, but it's still pretty awesome and might give you some ideas of things that you can do, you know, like distorting or spreading out areas and stuff like that. Um, and then there's some other aspects to these pieces and you can check out more on his website.
And then the last one is just a selection um, from glitchart.com on um, video glitching. And there's a long, really cool history of people um, using and abusing digital and analog technologies to break and destroy images in really interesting ways. Um, and if you're interested in that, I definitely recommend taking some time. There's lots of examples here, but a lot of these are pixel-based. Many of them are not computational necessarily because they're working with analog tools, um, but they might give you ideas for stuff that you can do digitally. Um, some other stuff then for you to look at in the resources folder you might want to check out. I got um, um, here as well some cool stuff to look at if you're curious about this, including the original source code for Photoshop, um, which is pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, basically your process is going to be to make this um, filter and then run it on at least three images um, and upload those to Canvas. So um, thinking about what images you feed in here too and what's going to make the best use of your filter. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I can't wait to see what weird, cool um, stuff you do with pixels.